Jason. Welcome to Liberty Live. Today we're going to be discussing mikveh. What is a mikveh? Why do we need to know about it today in Liberty Live? Very simple. You are familiar with the Greek word baptism or baptizo. This word baptism or baptizo should or could be interchangeable with mikveh. Mikveh is a Hebrew word which means to collect. The reason is, is the water for the mikveh was collected. It comes by God, by rain, by stream, by river, by sea, and is collected into a vessel that looks like this. Now, this is a very small scale. In a place like the Jordan River, in Israel, or in a place like Qumran, where we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, where this replica model comes from, uh, we made it here in a laboratory, but the real one is actually, look at it here. Close semblance, huh? Huh? It comes from the need to be ceremonially clean and or pure before, which is called ritual immersion. By the way, baptism is full immersion, entire body. Okay, think of when someone jumps in a swimming pool like a cannonball and their feet are tucked and their head goes in, whether you're plugging your nose or not. A real baptism is full full submergent because if you're putting the old works to death, the body of sin, your old life, you can't be half in and half out of the grave, if you know what I'm saying. You're either all in or all out. And if someone says, wait a minute, how do you explain the resurrection? Brilliant point. Now you understand the archetype of baptism. Now, mikvah was a temporary way to make one ritually pure before entering into the Mikdash, the house of God, the temple. It was a way to be ritually pure. Now, <clears throat> this is not just like a bath. You can go into a bath with soap for yourself, but a mikvah was unto God. A mikvah was a preparatory act or action of cleansing oneself, almost, if you will, something externally for something that was happened internally. Also, think about this. Before you go to a surgery or the doctor, don't you want him to wash his hands? Don't you want him to be in a sterile suit? Okay, now you understand typically what clean and unclean in the Bible were. It's not a measure of righteousness. You can have a doctor that's wicked as the day, but he is sterile. Matter of fact, in most operating rooms, they are sterile environments. Even the tools have been heat treated or sanitized and individually wrapped so that they're not exposed to any germs. Well. The priests are the same way. We have to be in a way that is almost a sterile environment. Now, what Jesus goes on to tell us, hallelujah, from the beginning, is that your heart has to be sterile. Sterile from pride, bitterness, envy, wrath, jealousy, in the actions that overflow into drunkenness, lasciviousness, uh, hatred, murder, and, and such things as this. I tell you as I did before. It says in, in Galatians that those who practice these things will not enter the kingdom of God. So we know it's more than uh, immersion in water. Now I want to show you this. This would fill up with rainwater. And again, in this model, there'd be land on each side. It would be made out of limestone or uh, regular stones that were native indigenous to Israel, covered with plaster, and then filled in with walls covered in plaster. So Nowadays, they're very beautiful, but the idea of a mikveh is a, a few certain laws apply. Now, remember I told you mikveh means to collect. Now, it has to be collected water from a source of God because it can't be altered and or tampered. Same thing when we make an altar. It has to, an original altar out of, out of unhewn stones. It has to be made out of stones that are uncut by chisels, unshaped, unaltered. Because when you come to God to be saved, to pray, you have to come as you are. You can't dress, you can't put on Sunday's best. You know, you don't bribe your way in. Now you give gifts because you love God, just like you give gifts to your husband or wife, but you have to have your right heart, right? To your son or daughter, mother or brother, friend, coworker, uh, peer, you understand. The heart is one, and then the overflow of the heart is two. This is why it says, first we are saved by the believing in the heart, and then out of the overflow of the heart, right? We profess Jesus Christ as Lord, and then by his command, you have to be baptized. He who is who believes and is baptized will be saved. Also, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they've been born again of water, of a mikveh, or river, stream, lake, right? Ocean, who has been born again and of the spirit, not just water, of the spirit, which means your heart also. Beloved, if your heart's not there, you can go in a mikveh baptism, you can go in a dry sinner and come out a wet sinner, change your clothes, 
your life remains unchanged. That's what, that's what a bath is. It's going and coming out. You may be physically clean, but actually you could still be unclean if your heart isn't right. The idea with a true baptism is you're putting to death the nature of flesh, self, uh, self-reliant, self-serving, self-preserving, and connecting with the nature of Jesus Christ, imputed righteousness by the resurrection. Here's the deal. When you get saved, Ezekiel said you'll give a new spirit and a new heart. That's what you get, a new spirit and a new heart. Okay. However, your body remains the same until the hope of resurrection. Well, how do I get resurrected? It's simple. How do you get a dowry? How do you get a, a, a grant? How do you get an inheritance? It's almost like you have to go, you have to volunteer first, either by right of blood, by showing up, by accepting an invitation, by accepting a gift, by responding to a call. Well, God caught us all to repent and be baptized. So even by you showing up and allowing God to wash away your sins, now you're a candidate for the resurrection. And I know what you're thinking. What about the thief on the cross? Right. If God wants to pardon a man who through no means is able to come down, that's the same. Even our president gets to pardon people. Do you remember when Pontius Pilatus on the uh, Passover week, there's Jesus and Barabbas, a model of the, of the Hashem, La Hashem and La Azel, the two goats on Yom Kippur. One is condemned and is pushed away and the other is, uh, is, is sacrificed and released. Well, in the same way, Barabbas means son of the father. He was an archetype that one of the sons of the father was released because the son took the punishment, right? So he traded his life as a dowry, propitiation, it's called. Jesus Christ traded his life to set the sinners free, in which case the physical prisoner, Barabbas, was the first one. Okay, now, how much more for us? He who knew no sin became filled with sin so that we who are filled with sin become the nature of his righteousness. He who is perfect became imperfect so that we who are imperfect could become perfect. Be perfect as my father's perfect. That's what he said. He who is holy took on the sins of the world. Well, sin isn't holy, but we were unholy. So he who is holy came down so that we who are unholy could become holy. He who is God humbled himself and took on the form of a man so that we who were men could have fellowship with God our father as he intended in the garden. So you have to go in, right? Like even Cinderella's chariot turned into a pumpkin and pumpkin into a chariot. How do you think you could transform into the imputed nature of God? Well, beloved, you have to do what he says. Jesus said, if you love me, you obey my commands. Now, again, in baptism, we are, we are keeping in step with the one who saves. But I want to tell you something. Baptism that started, again, they did this in the, in the keep in mind, 3400 BC, with Moses and Aaron and the Levitical priesthood and the tabernacle. They had to cleanse their, they had to wash their whole body, cleanse their hands and feet in the labor, the brazen labor. Here's a picture here. And then it got bigger over time. So then there was, first it was just Aaron's family. Then Aaron's family multiplied. Then there were hundreds and hundreds of priests. And it became so big, then they had smaller wash basins. They always had to baptize or wash or mikveh before they went to the presence of God. Now, even on the holidays, right? Passover, Tabernacles, Sukkot, uh, um, first of all, Yom Kippur, unleavened bread. They had to take a mikvah before the Temple Mount. You're going, well, 2.3 million people. Where are you going to find a mikvah as big as that? They found it on the Temple Mount, very close by. It's, it's like a city block size, a mikvah that could fit hundreds of thousands of people. Remember, when you do a mikvah, you go in and you go out. You're not hanging out. You're going in, fully submerged, and then you go out. The act is done. Now, here's what's amazing. This was a temporary thing. Because Remember, if I mikvah today... I go, go out and I'm unclean. I make for again tomorrow. The sons of light, the Essenes at, at Qumran, the sect with their, which was called the Yahad, we are one. Like here, Israel, the Lord God is one. They make for twice a day to maintain ceremonial purity. Now, remember, to be sterile, not a condition of righteousness. You know, someone could be unclean and fully righteous because they were at a funeral of their loved one, or you could be quote unquote sterile and be so unrighteous. You could take a bath and never be clean because your heart is not right. But this is what this represents. Okay, and remember, natural process, natural water. Temporary. Let me show you what's permanent. This is another place, so to speak, the tomb, right? Made out of the same material, limestone. This used to be permanent, one and done. You go in, that's it. You don't come out again. Wait a minute. 
Jesus turns the tables in the temple and he turns the tables of the world upside down. This used to be permanent. Now, because of resurrection, it's temporary. Notice how there's no body in here anymore, right? Because, hallelujah, he lives. Jesus came out of the holding tank, if you will. He, he went in like a caterpillar and turned into a butterfly, transformed into the fullness of the glorious deity that he is, and the resurrection comes out in power, giving us right or access to the same. Before, this was temporary. Now, in a baptism, this is an archetype of this. Now, this becomes permanent through baptize. You baptize says you have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one transformation from death to life in the waters of repentance by the command of Yeshua Jesus. Now, this used to be temporary. Now, it's permanent. This used to be permanent. Once this happened, beloved, on a very famous day, this that used to be permanent is now temporary. Do you understand that Jesus conquered death? So when death was permanent, now it's temporary. Death has no more sting on us. Now we're going to live forever because of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when we share him in his death, we'll share him with his life. It says, he who endures with him will reign with him. He who is faithful, he will be faithful. He who is unfaithful, God will remain faithful because he cannot disown himself. If you die with him, you will live with him also. Beloved, Jesus commanded us to take up his cross. Now, when he starts speaking about the cross, this is basically what he said. The Son of God will be betrayed, he will be crucified, and then on the third day he will rise. How did we not understand that he told us about this long before it happened? How are we weeping at the tomb when, just like an oven in just a little bit, he is going to be perfected? I mean, once and for all, for all, so that we who are imperfect could become perfect. Now, do you know we were even baptized in the Old Testament? Not a mikvah, a baptism. You go, what do you mean? When we came out of the Red Sea, the Sea of Reeds, through the Yom Su, the Gulf of Aqaba, we were slaves, we became sons. We who were not a nation became Benai Israel. Do you know when Philip the evangelist was walking by the road to Jerusalem, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, an, an official of Candace, a queen of the Ethiopians, which ever since the queen of Sheba visited Solomon, which was part of the kingdom of Ethiopia at that time, they've been making pilgrimage to the temple to give gifts, to honor God, to worship the Lord, to learn about Torah, the wisdom of God. And all of a sudden, Philip joins himself to the chariot. He hears the man reading Isaiah 53, and he says, who is he talking about, the prophet Isaiah, himself or someone else? And Philip goes, well, let me tell you. And it says he explained to him, this is all it says, the way of the Lord. Now, this also was mentioned by Paul, that he told them the way of the Lord. And all of a sudden, he sees water. He says, hey, can I be baptized too? Now, how do we know we're talking about baptism, right? Well, and Philip goes, yeah, and he baptizes him immediately. Also, Paul tells these guys that he finds in Ephesus. Were you guys filled with the Holy Spirit and you believe? They go, Holy Spirit, we were only baptized in the baptism of John, which was like a mikvah because that was preparing them for the presence of God, like the temple. You get a mikvah, you get sterile before you enter into the place of God, right? So that everything is right. You know, we get your wedding day, the baby is born. They clean them immediately so that they are just in a proper state, the proper state. Again, you could be clean and be unrighteous. You could be unclean and be righteous. However, being sterile is being sterile. That's so that there's no germs, no complaint, no scent, nothing, but you are a clean human being. Do you know even when you're born, you come out of the water, right? How do we not understand that being born again, you have to come out of the water? Isn't it in the beginning before God created anything? There was Genesis chapter one, verse two, there is water, the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the waters, the face of the, he hovered like a bird. Where does that make sense? Where does that sound familiar? When the bird hovered over God, the dove came upon him, hovering over the waters when Yeshua was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. Beloved, he was setting an example for you and I to follow. And he said, come follow me. So we, oh, I get it. Put the natural life to death and come out filled with the light of God and the Holy Spirit of God because you believe. 
Now, if you, you can't believe, you can't be baptized without believing. No other religion even practices baptism, not a real religion. You know why? Because it comes from Jesus Christ by the name and by faith in the name. Even the people that crucified him said, we killed the prince of life. What do we do now? And Peter said, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of sins. Then later on in Acts, he says, come on, come into the water, wash away your sins. Be done with that. But again, this is not just a mikvah because it is in the name of Yeshua. We are doing this in obedience to the Lamb of God, to the Lord of life. In the name of the Father, Yahweh, who is all, ever, all, was, and or will ever be. And he comes in the flesh, Yahweh, right? The God who was, is, and is to come. He comes in the flesh, Yahshua, which means God saves. Lord, you're coming now in the flesh to show me an example and to lead me to you. How do I follow you? Put your old life to death. Put it off. Have you have to, when you, by the way, when it's dead, it's dead. You ever go to a cemetery? It's, that's it. Game over. Well, how do I, how do I put the death, the sin, the shame, the regrets, beloved, in the cemetery? Put it to death, right? In the waters of repentance, in the waters of baptism. Now, now I'm sterile, right? No. Now it says you have to pledge of a clear conscience before God. That's what baptism acts as. It says it's not a removal of dirt from the body. That's what a mikvah is, right? It's A mikvah is a right standing and being sterile with God, but it's not like a bath. Again, even a mikvah is holy to God, whereas a bath is just a bath. A mikvah is not something you use soap. Mikvah, you go in, it's prayer. So let's be uh, understanding about what a mikvah is. But again, a mikvah is temporary. A baptism is permanent. It's once and for life. You put the old life to death and you come out in the pledge of resurrection, in the notion of resurrection. And by the way, resurrection is real. It shall visit all of the faithful. Yes, it was, so shall it. Jesus already showed us his example. He was baptized in the flesh. He was he come out in glory. He was seen of angels. He was taken up in the same glory, the glory of God. Now he abides forever as a priest after the order of Melchizedek, making intercession for those who trust within him. Now, is it such a thing to believe that as we were born out of the water when our mother's water broke? Even Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter his womb again? Even he knew that... It's like you're born out of the water. How does that how does that work? You can't go in the water again, or can't you? That's what the waters of baptism are all about. See, you can't enter your mother's womb again. You can enter God's womb, the womb of the earth, the cradle of mankind. By the way, where did we come from originally? The earth. God made us from the dust. We become, a, the first word, by the way, is Adam, which is Aleph, dim. Aleph is spirit. Dim is blood. The spirit and the blood mixed with the, the Spirit of God, the Pak, we become a life-giving being. So we came literally from Aretz, from the ground, and God breathed on us. It says that in Genesis 2. God breathed into our nostrils the breath of life from the ground, and we're created in the, the ground of the earth. Then we go back into the ground of the earth, the water, into the because the water's level with the ground. We go in again, <clears throat> and we come out. So ultimately, we came from the earth. How can we come from the earth again? Very simple. We come out of the water. We come out of the water naturally. We come out of the water spiritually. Now, I want to tie two ideas together. Do you know when Jesus appeared to us in John 20, 22? He breathed on them. Interesting. The Bible says we're a new creation in Christ, created for good works. We're a new creation in Christ, recreated by the Lord himself. Or new creation in Christ. And Jesus Christ therefore put off the old and take on the new. Interesting that when Jesus breathed on us, right? In John chapter 20, he breathed on them and said, be filled with the Holy Spirit, be filled with life. That's the moment of recreation, okay? Because when we were created in Genesis, God breathed on us. And now if we're recreated, it's almost like, you know, how can I be born again? I have to come I came out of the water to be born to be born again I have to come out of the water I was created by the wind by the breath of God by the spirit of God how can I be recreated by the spirit of God Jesus has to blow on you this is why it says be filled with the Holy Spirit do you know since Jesus said be baptized until you put the old to death remember he's jealous he will share you with no one 
The Lord is jealous. He is one. There is no God besides him. So until you put the life that was born in sin to death, how can you be joined to the Lord? He who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. How can you be joined with the Lord in a real marriage, a marriage union, without putting the old marriage to death, the marriage to the world, the marriage to the flesh, the marriage to sin? You have to put it to death, and then the bridegroom breathes upon you, and you are filled with his spirit. Now that spirit comes forth. You speak in tongues. You have gifts. You prophesy. You have peace like never before. You're forgiven. You know that you know that you know that you are new. There is evidence, by the way, beloved. There is evidence of a new life, the hope of resurrection, the power of resurrection, the pledge of resurrection, the pledge of a good conscience, the pledge of a new life. Your, show me your faith by your works. Your life will testify that it is new. Why? Because God is God in all realms, spirit and truth. He's not just God of the spirit. He's God of truth. That's why archaeology lines up with the gospel. That's why he came in the flesh, so that we who are in the flesh could see the face of God. Beloved, I want you to consider putting your old life to death and coming out in the power of his resurrection. By the way, if we do this now, if you were born once and then born again, if you come out like in resurrection power, you're going to do it again on the day of the Lord. Here's the catch. Everyone is resurrected on the day of the Lord. There's resurrection of the just and of the unjust. The unjust are resurrected by God because they have to give an account for the deeds they did in the body. But you and I have put yourself to death by the waters of baptism, the waters of repentance, the waters of regeneration, already put that body to death. So when we resurrect, it's unto glory by the mercy of God and the grace of God. Remember that only Jesus is the judge of the living and the dead. Are you ready to stand before him? The Bible says if you have fear on the day of judgment, like now if you're afraid, I'm not ready to go. But then get ready now. Do not be foolish. Be quick to discern the will of God. How do I do that? Ask him. Read the word of God. Pray. Fast. Seek. Beloved, God wants you to know more than you want to know yourself because he's a loving father. It was his idea in the first place. So we see that the law of the mikvah is valid, perfect, and pure. And we also see that is temporary. But the law of baptism is permanent. And this is what we were commanded to do. Now, it's incomplete if you don't share that part of the gospel. That's why every part of the gospel you find, they believe and they are baptized. They believe and they are baptized. I told you the way of the Lord. There's water, I should get baptized. You're right. Because Jesus said, go out into all the world, telling them to make disciples, right? And to be baptized. It says in Romans, if you believe to the Lord, you'll be saved. Interesting that if you believe in the Lord, you will obey his commandments. And his command is to be baptized. But you can't be baptized unless you first believe. It's kind of like when Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. That seems real critical, doesn't it? But you can't forgive unless you believe first. So belief is everything. First, you have to believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek after him. Next, if you really believe, you will become. How do you become? You must obey. You have to obey God. You have to draw near to God. Love it. Anything that God says to do, you must do it, right? You get to do it. So if God says, beloved, put your old self to death. Come out and rest in peace and joy and come into the new creation I have. Hey, caterpillars, become a butterfly. Then, beloved, run, jump. Make haste. Let nothing stop you from being baptized. May there be nothing that Jesus says to do that you haven't done so that your conscience will be right before God. You will be clean and pure and holy. And your heart must be right. First, before you get baptized, just repent. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be baptized. And then you will be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Ah, uh -uh. one time Peter preached and the Holy Spirit came on there now. 
to the Gentiles. And he said, what do we do? God has made no distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles. They're filled with the Holy Spirit too. He said, okay, get them all baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, however God does it, he does it. You can be filled with the Spirit and then baptized or baptized and filled with the Spirit. The point is that you need all. You need everything that God has, everything he says. You know, you could have a car with no tires. You could have a priest with no temple. You could have a phone with no service, a fridge with no food, a candle with no light, a page with no words, a pillow with no bed, a couch with no cushions, but you can't be without the Lord. And you can't pick and choose how you serve and honor God. The whole gospel, all of his word, all of his commands and customs. Beloved, the law of liberty is the law of Christ Jesus. Everything he said to do, beloved, we must do. What should we do then to be saved? Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of sins. And then the gift of God, the Holy Spirit of God, shall come upon you. Beloved, Adam needed the breath of God to live, to become alive, and to move forward. The apostles waited for Jesus, needed the Spirit of God to come alive. Then on the day of Pentecost, the apostles well, we have the life of God. We need the power of God. They needed another dose of the ghost with the most, the Ruach Kodesh, the same spirit God breathed. He breathed again. We needed a rushing wind. Do you know even when it flooded the earth in Genesis during Noah, that the waters came from a pond and the fountains of the deep were broken up. So the ocean swelled and the heavens opened. This is the same way with the Holy Spirit. You believe in God, but even to believe, Jesus said you can't believe unless the Father draws you or enables you. In other words, it takes the Spirit of God for you to accept the Spirit of God. It comes within when you believe, and then it comes upon for empowerment for Christian service to fulfill Ezekiel, to fulfill Joel, to fulfill, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. And then I pour out, pour out the Spirit, and they will prophesy, they will dream dreams and see visions. That is the empowerment that comes from above. That's what happened. That's the rain that fell on Pentecost. The rain of the Spirit, the latter rains. That's what came upon us to transform us. But what comes within for not insurance, but assurance, the peace of God, the Spirit of God to become a new creation is the breath of God. Beloved, we need it all. The Word is the fullness. I admonish you to seek God now with the fullness. Pray fast, seek. And may the Holy Spirit fall upon you suddenly, even by hearing this. The Lord is God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and he shows no partiality between Jew and Gentile. He whose heart is pure shall see God. He whose heart is right. How do I become right with God? Repent and be baptized. Believe on he who came in the flesh, was seen of men, vindicated, Take it up in the glory. Believed on in the world. Heralded by angels. At the right hand. Ever living to make intercession. 